okay now we will see now you will understand it what is the database client what is the database server and what is an sql this is very very basic uh, terminology okay now how to install oracle so go to the oracle website just go to the google and just type the oracle you will see the oracle site just type oracle download you will navigate to the oracle websites okay so here in top downloads page you can see the database downloads right so just click on the database now pulse is the latest version of oracle there is 9 8 10g 11g and 12c is the latest now you come to the download base software downloads so here these are all java kind of stuff and this is the database exactly this is the database now if you see here it will show so many versions are available see this oracle 10g enterprise and standard editions and oracle 10g express edition so express edition is always a license required express edition is required license okay and you need to download this one oracle 11g enterprise or standard editions just click on this okay if you see here it will show many i'll copy this okay in the kind later you can refer this downloading oracle this is the link right so now go here or else i'll copy this in ms word you can see the screenshots wrong right so now here okay here you need to this is my url okay here you need to select this one in database section this is oracle 11g enterprise and standard edition oracle 11g express edition express edition is a license based again okay and then you go for the database level g enterprise and standard edition i'll take this screenshot in this go for this okay and then click on this and now we will get this okay. i think the latest in uh, downloads will be available if you go for older ones also available 11g is also available and better to download 11g because 12c required a lot of space because that much space is not required actually and also in 12c there are a lot more advanced features we do we are not going to learn those concepts actually so only for dba prospective okay but 11g is enough for us so go here Oracle 11G release 2 here if you go here here Microsoft Windows so again Oracle can be installed on Windows or else we can install on Linux Unix it supports all environments okay so here go for Microsoft Windows if your Windows is 64 bit then you need to download the this file 64 bit and if your Windows is 32 bit then you go for the first one usually nowadays all the vms machines are 64 bit okay so now we go here okay copy this either 32 bit or 64 bit based upon your machine how you will know whether your machine is 64 bit and 32 bit go to the computers and you can see the properties <coughs> okay just go to the my computer properties <coughs> computer properties now it will show here windows 7 64 bit if it is your 32 bit it will show the x84 something like this other than 64 bit it will show anything else that is a 32 bit okay so now based upon the bit you need to download that particular part and you will get the uh, some installation some zip kind of file okay so if you already downloaded then i'll put it in the google drive okay directly you can download from there okay so now uh, i'll also send one video for installation 
you there is so there are so many insta videos are available in the youtube also so just you can go to the google uh, youtube just type youtube go to the youtube and just uh, youtube video install oracle 11g database just type like this and directly you go for uh, video right so they will show clearly step by step just you can follow them how to install a database and how to see this so same page right whatever the page i have shown you same page so now they will download this will take around one one and a half hour time for installation the database server see this but before that what is the important point is if you want to download that particular file you have to sign up okay it will you it will ask your user id and username and password and like so once you sign up then only you can download this server that is a free sign up okay that's what it here it is showing so you need to enter all the stuff so see this oracle when installation windows you can go through some videos see see this this is see this this is all installation process they will show the step by step process clearly just just go through this okay i'll send this link also installation steps installation will take lot of time actually maybe oracle will take 40 45 minutes right now so this is a downloading stuff just you try to download or else i'll put the in g drive just you can unzip the file and just click on exe file it will start installation and if you have any doubts in between installation just watch this video that video will explain very much clearly okay now so now once we install the database what kind of files we will get so you will get one folder like this so i have 10g 11g something 11g i have some clients okay you will get the folder like this so if you expand this folder you will get an application development application development so this is very important for us okay application development here in application developer it will show you two clients sql developer is an ui client gui client and sql plus is a command client sql plus is a command line interface as i said right so client is in two modes database client is used for interacting with the database that is like a interface and it can be a cli or gui mode so here even sql developer is also will come automatically see this here if you go here sql developer is also come automatically right so this is a software in 11g if you download and install 11g maybe sql developer you will not get but it is we are getting this default with 12c software not with 11c i don't think so but if you don't get sql developer what you can do is again go to the same site again go to the same site here on the same site uh, go to the downloads again here sql developer you can see separate file just that is also one zip file so we can go here developer tools here you can see the sql developer developer tool this is a sql developer so you can just download only this and you can install this is just like a, again this is related to again windows 64 bit or 32 bit just you can download and this is simply exe file okay so you can install this separately but if you install 12c you will automatically get this this is a client this is required okay this is the gui client okay and uh, but some some more days we will see completely on the gui side and later time i will explain even cli also how to we can run the commands using cli okay so now this is a installation and setting a process now once you install the oracle software you will get this folders under application development under application development you will see 
two clients SQL developer and SQL plus and if you install server you will see other folders also this and all you will see Oracle installation products everything you will see and our intention is this is a more intention application development is required here if you want to interact the database if you want to write queries and everything in UI part you can go for the SQL developer or else you go for the SQL plus right just to create the shortcut for SQL developer like this right now what we can do here is just open this SQL developer I already open this one minute you need to open this SQL developer now I open the SQL developer so by default just a moment what I can do is I'll copy the connection details I'll try to connect to uh, remote database server actually okay let me copy the connection details actually so if I want to connect to the database what I required is connecting connecting to the database so if I want to connect to the database either it can be local or remote location I need require I need some details for Oracle what details are required I required the host name the first thing is the host name I required so host name what is the host name host is nothing but wherever the database server is installed that is called as a host name that machine name every machine has its own name or we can provide some IP also if it is a network we can provide an IP or directly we can specify the host name how we will know the host name go to the computer again properties so here you can see the computer name right this is the computer name so that name we should provide or if your database server is installed in your local machine in your same laptop in that case you can provide simple local host host name can be this one or if it is a local directly you can put like local you can put like uh, local local host you can put local host if it is your same machine or if it is a remote machine you need to copy the host name or IP address this is the first thing we require and then we need a port number is required for every database these are the common details we need a port number is required this is required usually by default Oracle port number will be 1521 default port number and we need SID or service name in both the SID and service name at least one we require and both are same actually so SID will be the Oracle 11G and also service name if I want to provide service name like this we have to provide dot there will be some URL like this so this is become the service name again either we should provide SID or service name SID is nothing but service ID service ID this is SID these are my database details okay and uh, SID can be changed this is not a static word actually based while installing the software that will ask you provide SID that time whatever you provide the SID that should be provided so while installing the software you need to copy these details that is very much important okay after installation is done so then you if you don't remember the SID that is very much difficult later okay while installation itself you need to copy the data whatever data you are entering while installation you need to write the data into some notebook or some text file okay once installation is completed you require these details to connect to the database that is more important right so host name is required Hostname refers to wherever the database server is located and port is required every database having a port that port is required and SID is only for Oracle SID will not be there for other databases okay SID is only for Oracle and apart from these three we need a username and password username and password username and password.
password let me check whether any other user is present or not a minute 1521 is a port if I use HR HR is present that is fine right HR is there okay now I'm going to use a username called HR okay I created this user okay you can create our own users I'll tell you everything later okay so now these are the connection details we required if you want to connect to the database right so now what i can do here is close all the sql developer stuff now whatever the client comes from the database installation i'll open that sql developer client application development under this we have sql developer right so go to this sql developer oh, it will ask for uh, java path actually so uh, in latest version of sql developer it doesn't ask so what you can do is if you are SQL developer first time you are invoking sometimes it will ask the Java path because it requires some Java if you want this invoke otherwise sometimes by default it will get some Java okay so what you can do here is just you need to browse you need to browse so in your machine somewhere the Java will be present go to the C drive and go to the program files Java is there right so somewhere so go to the JRE and say when bin go to the java exe just open this just click on ok uh, install on path cannot ok go to some other location go to go here application development here browse this is only jre we need jdk yeah, go to the java 7 yes this one bin JDK lib not lib okay Java version has not been set for only Java version is not set for continue anyway just click on the S versus this the okay it click this is older version actually it, this SQL developer is older version but still no problem can continue with this click on S yes. Now it start. This is a little old version actually. It's 2012. It is okay. import preference are not required. No. Now yes. So if you download the latest version of SQL Developer, it will not ask anything because by default it will get the Java. Okay. So now cancel this. Now see this. This is a SQL Developer UI. When you open the first time, you will get like this. This is SQL Developer UI and this is a home page. Close this. Okay. By default, you don't have any connections here. This is a just client. Okay. Now I have a client and now I have a database which is installed in a remote location and also I have some details here. This is my connection details. Now I need to provide these details to connect to the database. How to connect to the database? Just right click on the connections or else just click on the plus button. Right. So here give some connection name or some oracle 11 g it can be any name this is optional whatever name you want to put you can put this but other details should be correct so here my username is hr password is hr and my oracle is present on this particular machine this is remotely located and now by default port is 1521 and what is my sid my sid is oracle 11 g this is my SID. Now, if I want to save this password with the connection, just select the password. Next time, you no need to enter the username password while connection. This is one time job. Okay. Just click on the test. The test is successful. So connected. So if you save, what happens is it will add one more node here. So next time onwards, you no need to enter all the details. Just click on the cancel now. So it added one node, right? So next time onwards, just you come here, just right click and connect. That's it. Don't enter time. Just automatically it will connect to the database and also it will show all the tables, views, indexes, packages, which are all this. See this. These are all the different kinds of tables which are present on the Oracle 11 G database. Also, different stuff is available. This is all different stuff in the FNG. And also, if you want to add, so this is the window. Here, we need to execute all the SQL commands. Okay. So now, if I want to disconnect this, just right click on disconnect and close this window. 
if you want to add one more node also i can add just click on here again add one more stuff and again one more node it will add here this is the way to work with the sql developer and now just connect it opens a window right i have some tables here so here i have different kinds of tables which is already created then how we interact suppose if i type uh, font increase yes, no? just a moment Select suppose star from employee. This is not a case sensitive. Okay, so you can type in small letters as well as you can type in capital letters. It is not, and also it should end with a semicolon. This is a syntax. So now if I give this command, so this will give us the data which is retrieved from the database. That is retrieved from the database. So this is how we can interact with the database. Through database client. Okay. Now, this is a basic understanding of client. Okay. Now, what I can do here is this is my connection details. Now, we talk about SQL. What is SQL? SQL is a language used to communicate with the database object. So, what type of commands are available under SQL? There are different types of commands are available under SQL. So what are those commands? So SQL language commands. It divided into again sub languages. Okay. The first one is DDL. DDL. What is data? Data definition language. data definition language and the second thing is dml data manipulation language data manipulation language and third one drl or dql what is drl data retrieval language and based upon the kind of commands see this if you want to create a table drop table okay definition level thing so all the definition level commands are grouped together put it into one kind of category that is called ddl and if you want to manipulate some data or if you want to insert or if you want to delete something so those kind of commands are grouped together and put it in one category and DRL and DQL, so data retrieving, for data retrieving, we will use only one command, that is select command. So that command is a part of DRL or DQL. So data retrieval language, data retrieval language or, or data query language, data query language. This is one category and another category is TCL transactional transactional or transaction control language and one more category TCL data control language. data control language so these are all different five categories the sql is divided so sql language is divided into based upon the activities so data definition it says it contains only definition commands like creating command dropping the table creating a table so those kind of commands will be the ddl contents and dml means data manipulation so this these commands these set of commands will work on only on data like uh, updating data or inserting data or deleting the data so these kind of activities these kind of commands comes under the dml 
and DRL or DQL, data retrieval language or data query language. So data retrieval in the sense already data is present, just we are getting the data, so retrieving the data. So we have a select command that comes under the DRL or DQL. There is another command called TCL, transaction control language. What is transaction control language means? Suppose if I have a table, we are inserting 10, uh, uh, 10 records and we have updated some records and we need to save that particular at that particular point. So for tra controlling the transactions, so for that kind of activities, we will use a TCL and DCL data control language. So data control language in the sense, suppose I have a table with some data. I want to give the table to the another user on the same database. And also I want to give some permissions on my table. Then he can use my table. He can use select and he can get the data from my table until unless I provide permissions on, on my table, other users cannot access the table. So also permissions I can give the multiple levels. I can give only select permission or else I can give only the update permission or I can give only the delete permission. If I give delete permission, what will happen? The user can delete the table itself. So I can give only select permission. So if I provide only select permission, what will happen? He can only select or view the data. He cannot corrupt the data. So that kind of activities we can do using commands. Those are all comes under the data control language. DDL, DML, DRL or DQL, TCL and DCL, transaction control language and data control language. So these are all the different types of commands are there under SQL under SQL. Now we will see what are the commands are there under this category. <coughs> DDL data definition language. So the command itself says data definition. So what is the data definition? Definition in the sense we need to creation or alteration or deletion or renaming the table. So those are called definition level activities, right? So it has a certain commands. Create is a one command. Alter is a one command. Already we table is created, but I want to alter something because I want to rename the column or I want to add one more column to the table. So those are all definition level activities. So alter is a one command. And also if you want to drop or if you want to delete the complete table, then we have a drop command and also we have a truncate command. Also we have a rename command. So these are all the commands which are all doing the same kind of activities. So all together comes under the DDL, data definition language. And there is, what is the use of DDL? What is the use of DC, DDL? So it is a collection of five commands, create, alter, drop, truncate and rename. Using these commands, we can do the definition level activities. Now, one more category is a DML, data manipulation language. So under this, what are the different commands will come? Data manipulation, it says clearly data manipulation. What is manipulation? Inserting or updating or deleting. So these kind of activities comes under the DML. Right, so here insert is one command used for inserting the data. So these all commands works only on a data, not definition. Okay, so inserting the data. So insert is a one command. And if you want to update the data, so that is update is a one command. And if you want to delete some rows or if you want to delete some kind of data, we have a delete command. Okay, so these are all commands comes under the DML data manipulation language insert update and delete dml operations these are called dml operations basically these commands are works on data now another command is <coughs> drl or dql drl or dql commands so here we have only one command and in previous days People are called select is also part of DML, but that is a different kind of command. So they have uh, created one more category under DRL and DQR. We have a select command. So this is only for selecting the data from the database. And apart from this, we have a TCL transaction control language. 
we are going to learn all these commands okay step by step so transaction control language so under transaction control language we have three commands commit is one command roll back these are all not case sensitive you can give all small letters commands or you can give all capital letters or you can give mixed no issues one more command is roll back command and one more is save point save point so these three commands comes under the tcl transaction control language and finally we have a dcl command okay so dcl data control language so under data control language we have only two commands grant and revoke as i said dcl commands are used for giving some permissions on our tables to the different users granting the permission grant is used for granting the some privileges or permissions on our tables or objects to the other users and if you want to take back permission from the other users then we can go for the revoke command whatever grants we have provided to the user if you want to get back to those grants we will use a revoke command so these are all commands are part of ddl dml drl or dql tcl or dcl data control language so these are all again part of sql so learning sql means learning all these commands how we can work with these commands okay is it clear